We're looking at connected objects in this video. These are two objects that could be subject to different forces or might be subject to just one force, but they're attached to each other. And as a result, when one object accelerates, we assume both objects are accelerating at the same rate. Uh, what, we're gonna, what we're really focused on here is how if we're looking at external forces, we can look at the, end, the object as a whole. And then when we want internal forces, we have to think about the object and break it down into smaller pieces so that whatever force we view as that force that we're trying to find is external to the object that we're looking at. So here we go, a train is pulling two box cars at a thousand kilograms each. Okay, here's one car. Here's our coupling hook to the second car. Some wheels on it, it's a train. And the train itself has a mass of 2,500 kilograms. So here it is. This is the engine of the train. There we go. The train is accelerating at 1.2 meters per second squared. Determine the por force provided by the train engine. Also determine the force in each of the couplings attached to the train. We have no information about friction or resistive forces in this question, so I guess we're going to assume that they're ignorable or zero. So this train is accelerating at 1.5 meters per second squared. And we want to find the force from the engine and then the force in each of these coupling attaching the trains. Okay, so first of all to find the force of the train engine we're going to consider this system as one big hole. So that's 2,500 kilograms plus 1,000 plus 1,000 for a total mass of 4,500 kilograms. There's a force of gravity and a normal force and we're assuming those two forces are equal and opposite. The train is running on level track I guess we have to assume and so we don't have uh, we don't have any those two forces are there but sort of ignorable. We have an acceleration of 1.5 meters per second squared and we can use Newton's second law to convert that into a force. Six thousand seven hundred and fifty newtons. Now we're going to assume that the train engine is the is the thing supplying that force. So what we're going to assume here is that we have six thousand seven hundred and fifty newtons, and that's the force of the engine. Okay, so that's our engine force. That's the answer to the first little part. Also determine the force in each of the couplings attaching the train and the box cars. So I need to find my force, I'll call that force one and I'll call that force two. So let's do force one first. What I want to do is I want to divide up this object now so that force one is no longer just part of the center, part of the internal stuff that's going on with the object, but it is instead part of, uh, but it is instead external to the system or pulling on the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little cleavage right here. That means that my new object is 1,000 kilograms. I'm just going to make my pen a little thinner. And I have some force, the force from the coupling, pulling on that train. Again, I have an acceleration of 1.5 meters per second squared. And so I can use Newton's second law to figure out what the net force acting on this object is. So I get a net force of 1,500 Newtons. Recognizing I have a force of gravity and a normal force, which are equal and opposite, so I'm sort of ignoring them. But this net force is really being caused by the coupling right here. So this is actually the force in that coupling. I'll call that FC1 because I referred to that as coupling 1 right there. FC1. 
Now, to come up with the second uh, coupling force here, right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a different choice. You might be tempted to say, well, what if I took this right like that? And you could do it, uh, and it would work out just fine, but it would be a little bit more complicated than is necessary. So let's make a little bit of a better choice. What if I went like this? Then, the only external force I have acting on this object is the force of interest. If I'd gone with my original choice, if I'd cut it off here, then I'd have a force pulling back and a force pulling forward. It's not a big deal, but it's a little bit more complicated unnecessarily. So let's instead stick with our big choice here. And that way, the only force that we have to worry about, or the net force, is going to be that F2 or that coupling, just like we did last time. This time, my total object has a mass of 2,000 kilograms. 1,000 plus 1,000. Again, they're all accelerating together. That 1.5 meters per second squared. So my net force, which we've talked about enough now, so we recognize that it is F2, is going to be equal to 2,000 kilograms times that 1.5 meters per second squared, or 3,000 newtons. Again, there's a force of gravity and a normal force, repeating myself, but they are equal and opposite and ignorable. And so the only force here that's causing this acceleration is Fc2, if you want, 3,000 newtons. So the point of this question is, when you're trying to find out forces within an object, to make it easy, what you want to do is you want to make clever choices about how you divide up the object. If the whole object has to have the same acceleration, then you can kind of divide them up how you need to, to try and figure out what the force must be. See, this coupling effectively has to pull both of these cars, so it makes sense when considering it to do the total of both cars where this coupling right here only has to pull this one car, so it only makes sense to look at that one car. Large wooden block, two kilograms, is resting. Two kilograms. Is resting against a small wooden block, one kilogram. About half the size. On the top of a table. A force of friction on each block is 5 newtons and 3 newtons respectively, so this guy has an FF of 5 newtons, and this guy has 3 newtons. Um, and then it's accelerating at 1.2 meters per second. Squared. I'm assuming in this direction, or whatever, it's got to be opposite the force of friction. And if I'm going to call this positive, then these forces of friction will become negative. So determine the overall force applied to the, box and, uh, to the blocks and the force between the blocks. So step one, let's consider the overall problem. Here, if I want to know the overall force applied to the block, what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat this entire system like it's one three kilogram object. Force of gravity force and normal. Okay. And I have some applied force to this system. That applied force is causing acceleration of 1.2 meters per second squared. And there's a force of friction pushing back. I'm going to total those two. So 5 and 3, so a total of minus 8 newtons. So with that in mind, I can use my acceleration to find my net force. I get a net force of 3.6 newtons. And then I can use the fact that my net force is the sum of the forces acting on the object to come up with the applied force that I'm missing. Now, if I'm a little bit clever here, I can look at 3.6 and know that I have to overcome this 8 newton force. And so I can do this by inspection and see that it's 11.6 newtons. 
11.6 less 8 will give me my 3.6. But if you're not seeing that immediately, the easiest thing to do is to recognize that the um, net force here is the sum of the forces and use the equation properly. It's always a good idea to substitute into the equation and not just uh, look at it and in that way you won't you'll avoid making a minor mistake. So there you go that's the overall force applied to the system. Now to determine the force between the blocks <coughs> excuse me let's go with blue here and if I want this force right here in between the blocks what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the simplest system possible and that is just this one kilogram block right here all on its own. So I'm going to forget that it's a two kilogram block that's pushing the one kilogram block and just focus on this guy as if it was the only question asked. One kilogram F G F N some sort of F between the blocks. So I'm going to call it FB for between or blocks, whatever you want to think of. The force of friction acting back on this block is going to be negative 3 newtons. And again, our acceleration is 1.2 meters per second squared. So a net force, which is equal to 1 times 1.2, would be proper with my units. 1 kilogram times 1.2 meters per second squared, which gives us a newton, or 1.2 newtons. And again, looking at the diagram, I can see that I need a force of 4.2 newtons to overcome the three and still have 1.2 left. But never a bad idea to write out the equation to avoid making a mental error. And there you have your 4.2 newtons.